another gracious welcome to each and every one that are here that are visiting today. And it's such a great, great honor to have you here to be a part of this service, Amen. this Decoration Sunday. Today is the day that we're going to celebrate the lives of the people that have been called home. Today's lesson is going to be titled, Death Has No Steam to God's Children. Amen. Uh, we will be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to start with verses 35 and go throughout the end of chapter 35 through 58. Chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. And before we get started, if we, would you all please bow your head and pray with me right quick. Heavenly Father, I just come to you today thanking you for all the many blessings. Heavenly Father, I'm thankful for this word that you have given us to comfort us, to use as our shield and as our weapon. Heavenly Father, your promises are great, your promises are grand. And I thank you so much for this promise that we have here in this chapter today. That death has no sting through you. Through you it is victory for us. The grave has no victory. Heavenly Father, just use me to speak your words that you would have me to say to comfort your children and to guide them in the thoughts that they need to have about this subject. Heavenly Father, I just love you so much and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now here, this is going to be talking about the resurrected body. That tells you right there, your loved ones that have gone on, guess what? We'll see them again because we're all going to be resurrected. Amen. When we pass away, folks, we're absent of this body. We're present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Then and there, we're changed. And this chapter is going to tell you that we're changed. We're changed to the perfect body. We no longer hurt. We're no longer corrupted. We're no longer tarnished. We're no longer diseased. We're in the perfect spiritual body, praise God. Thank you, Lord, for that promise. All right, uh, let's get to God's Word here. Verse 35. It says, But some man will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. Now what that's talking about here is our spiritual body. That which is sown is not quickened, except it die. That means it's got to be born again. But first it's got to die to be born again. And when we die, we're born again. Mm -hmm. If you are in God's family, when you die, you are born again there instantly. Verse, thir uh, verse 37, uh, verse 37, <clears throat> excuse me. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may have may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it has pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beast, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Now here in verse 42 here, the body is sown in corruption. It doesn't mean that you're sown a bad person. What that means is you're sown 
a body that will fail. We're all going to do that. We all have a body that will fail on us. Amen. It is subject to disease. It is subject to falling away from the Word of God. It's subject to be corrupted. Amen. And that's what that's talking about here. But did you hear what it said in that verse there? It said it will be raised incorruptible. Amen. It will be raised incorruptible. Hallelujah. No disease. No pain. No suffering. No sorrow. No agony. Amen. It will be raised incorruptible. Verse 43, it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. Hallelujah. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Amen. Now folks, when we pass away, your loved ones that passed away, the ones that are up on this hill, the ones that are in any graveyard, they're not there no more. Amen. That's just Amen. their body. Amen. That's Amen. their vessel that they were sown in. They were sown in, in, in corruption. They were sown in weakness and dishonor. That body is laying there proof of that. Because incorruptible is immortality. Amen. That's your spiritual body. And that's what you are in just as soon as you take that last breath and the Lord calls you home. You're in that spiritual body. Absolutely. Absent from this body, you're in the presence with the Lord. Amen. Amen. That makes you spiritual. That makes you incorruptible. That makes you perfect body. No more hurt, no more pain, no more suffering. No more sorrow. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Now who are we talking about here, the last Adam? Jesus Christ. He was the quickening spirit. Amen. The first Adam, we're talking about, of course, Adam and Eve. He was made a fleshly body. Amen. Now, what was his downfall? Hmm. Things of the flesh, was it not? Yes. It was things of the flesh. His body was incorruptible. His mind was, I mean, his body was corruptible. His mind was corruptible. But the second Adam here was made a quickening spirit. Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord. Albeit that was not first, which was, is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth. Earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Amen. Amen. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as, it, it, as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. <coughs> now, earthy. Here you think about what dirt. And that's what our bodies, that's what our vessels will return to. And our spirit will return to God Almighty who gave it to us. We'll return to Him incorruptible. Verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we also bear the image of the heavenly. Now we are made in the image of God. And the likeness of Him. So we are made in the likeness of perfection. And our bodies begin, as soon as we're born, our bodies begin to die, unfortunately. Sad to say, but it's true. That's why we've been told to weep not for those who die, but weep for those who are born. 
a child is just starting the trials and tribulations that the ones that have passed on and gained the victory has done overcame or come through through the grace of God. Amen. It's human nature to mourn, and we're all we're, we are told to mourn. We are told to mourn our loved ones. It's human nature. We're going to do that. It's selfishness. It is selfishness. But you know what? I can't help to be selfish. Amen. Because you know that's a human that's a human quality. Selfishness. But we are to mourn our loved ones. But as we're going to find out further in this chapter, why we should be celebrating the day that they took their last breath. The day that they took their last breath, their troubles are over. Amen. But there is a condition that their troubles to be over that you have to go by, and we'll also find that out at the end of this chapter. There is a condition. <clears throat> but to be absent of this body, remember, no matter what you've done on this life, to be absent of the body, be in presence of the Lord. Amen. Be it in paradise or you're still across the gulf. But you will be in the presence of the Lord in your spiritual body. <laughs> Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen. Now here, we're getting into the condition that I was just speaking of. It says we shall not all sleep. What does that mean? We're going to die. Our bodies are going to die. But we all shall not sleep through the giving of life that Jesus Christ gave His life on that cross. And we confess to Him and ask Him into our life and we've done God's work. At that time when the last breath is taken, you enter the victory. You have the rest. Amen. It says, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and shall be changed. For this corruptible, corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. Amen. Did you hear that? Is that not some beautiful, beautiful words there that is promised to us? Death is swallowed up by the victory. Now what's this victory? Jesus. Amen. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus is our victory. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is the law. Now listen here. This is the most important keynote of this chapter in my eyes. There's so much more to this than what I've gone through. I'm just trying to get a simple message out. But this is one of my messages I need you to understand here. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. He, he, thank you, Jesus. He gave us such a great, great, great gift there that all we have to do is believe on Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Confess His holy name. Ask Him to forgive our sins. Then the blood will be applied to our sins and washed away, forgotten. Amen. Clean. Clean. When the blood of Christ is applied to our sins. It's clean. 
It gives us victory. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. That's Amen. Where we're at. In the Lord, your labor is not in vain. These promises are given to us, children of God, that death cannot defeat us. Why? Jesus Christ went to Calvary, hung on that cross, shed every single drop of blood. Not for what he did, but what for I did. Amen. What you did. What we did. He gave his life. He passed away. He was buried in a tomb. The tomb was rolled closed. Laid there for three days. And then he rose from the dead. Amen. Amen. To defeat death. Who is death? Who, who is death? Satan. That very day, he defeated Satan. Amen. Of course, he already done it before that. But that very day, Satan knew that he was beat. He was done. He was over. Because if Christ rose, guess what? So shall his people rise after they pass away with their earthly bodies. Amen. We will rise to the Lord Savior God. Amen. But it says here in verse 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. <coughs> Your family that has passed away. You know that they give their life to the Lord. Why should we mourn them? Honestly, ask yourself, why should we mourn them? Because guess what? They've moved on. They've got the victory. Guess what? We're still down here trying to fight to get the victory. Amen. But we must abound in the work of the Lord. What that means, we need to do our work. So that way that we know that our family knows Jesus Christ. Amen. We've got to work. We've got to know that our family knows Jesus Christ and ask Jesus Christ into their lives. Which with the millennium, Jesus is going to give us another chance. Amen. But you know what? I don't want to be a part of that getting... Get, had to ask, answer why the words right here all you got to do is study it ask the Holy Spirit to help you and study it that's doing the Lord's work because if you're studying it you're going to do the things that are commanded of you and the Lord's going to say well done thy good and faithful servant Amen. Amen. there's no excuses there will be no excuses in that day you will be given every opportunity to repent and turn from the errand of your way. But why not do it while you're here now? Amen. Amen. Why not do it while you're here now? And then do God's word. Amen. And take his meaning with you Amen. to the gates of heaven. And to know and to give yourself comfort. And know that they're there. In the presence of God in paradise today. If they go today, you know that they're there in Amen. paradise. Amen. Amen. Would that not seem to help the grieving process? So you see that you, you got either way you can choose. You can go on about your life, not give your life to Jesus, and not know, and then have to partake in the millennium and get your get your head strung up by Jesus and have to ask answer him why you didn't. 
Instead, you can make a choice today, this very day, and ask Jesus into your life. Amen. And you can be there helping teach your loved ones. Amen. If they did not follow Christ on this earth, you can help teach your loved ones. So it's your choice. It's your choice. And that's the great thing about God. He's a loving God because He gives you a choice. Amen. Life or death. That eternal life or eternal death. Which one would you choose? Today I hope you choose life. Amen. If we would all please bow your head.